Hi. Thank you for, Hi. Thank you for being here. I'm going to ask you if you will each just introduce yourself and tell me where you flew in from. I know you didn't fly in, but where you flew in from. And then I'm going to ask you a whole bunch of questions about generosity. So welcome to the podcast. Can I have you? Yeah, I'm Rachel Bauer um, from Sacramento, California. Sheena Satan from Washington, D.C. Melissa Leifer from New York City. Daniela Sambera, Houston, Texas. Christina Ward, Boise, Idaho. <laughs> Here with me. And the one that's hosting this entire event that has all these amazing women coming in. So you all are here for a generosity conference. And I thought the first question that I would ask is, you've come to talk about what you all do for generosity. Will you start out by giving me a little bit of what has generosity meant, not only in your business life, but what has it meant in your professional life? And I'll just let whoever wants to start go with that one. Christina. Oh, okay. <laughs> Everybody's looking at you, so you go. Well, I grew up with very generous parents, so I had a lot of great examples in my life. And it's just, it's culturally in my family what we must do. And when you've received generosity, you want to also give it. Because how dare us take something if we haven't given to. Yeah. Um, what is it meant so in business for, for you? For my business, it was, it, it started with giving my time you know, even just time to clients, mm -hmm. unlimited time. And then when I started making money, because in the beginning, in my 20s, I wasn't making very much money. So I just gave, gave, gave with time and learned a lot and gave with knowledge after I learned. Mm -hmm. And then it, it, it hit me one day when we were making a lot of money, more than our fair share, that we weren't giving back to our community. And so we started doing that. And then, and what that's done for me is um, personally, is it's, I feel like, I've done my job every day. And so I can just go, you, I've done my best. I've done my job. I've given back as much as I could. And I can go to sleep like fulfilled that I did my best that day. Mm -hmm. And um, and the thing that's happened also that I didn't expect was the attract, how attractive of a business it's become. Yeah, It's been a magnetic, attractive business where people want to be a part of it too. Well, I think it's interesting too, because that's the reason that all of you and the next group that I'm going to be interviewing are together is because you all have that heart for generosity. So what has it meant in your business for you? Have you noticed a big difference since you started giving? And what is what does that look like for you? Oh, my gosh. Well, 100 percent. You know, I, I haven't told really the story well. And the one thing is I got into real estate and for me to get back. Um, I was always kind of, you know, as a stay at home mom trying to fund projects on a limited budget. And um, I thought like, hey, I'll get into real estate and I can get back. Um, I like people and I like opening doors and haha, -ha, like that's like 1% of the business. Mm -hmm. um, but getting into it, I knew that I wanted to make a difference. I didn't know how I was going to make it until I met some really great people that inspired me. And that has given me the opportunity to give back in my community. And it's impacted my business by having, you know, people that reach out and say, I want to work with you because of the work that you do in the community. Mm -hmm. And so to see that kind of be uh, that ripple effect and just, you know, I know that people want to give back. Sometimes they just don't know how to give back. So mm -hmm. giving them uh, the, the, the opportunities to say, hey, this is happening. How do I get involved? How do I give? And how do we work with you? Because we know that your mission is way bigger than just being, you know, our real estate expert. It's such a great point, I think, that facilitation, because there are people that maybe feel like, oh, I don't have the resources to give, but they can give up their time. And if you can help them to do that, what an impactful thing it is, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Has it impacted outside of your business? Um, in ways that you didn't expect? Um, I will say I am um, the one person that comes to my mind is like my kids or the people, uh, my kids, um, they're growing up watching their mama get back. And just like we recently had my daughter turn 10 on Monday and we had a, uh, she wanted to give a um, uh, fundraise for the Houston Food Bank. And so we were able to raise $1,620 in one day, which I thought like that was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And just to see her now for like the last four years, have it be like, that's her part of her birthday wish is to fundraise and give back. Mm -hmm. So raising so little cool. humans to be giving is just been pretty fun to watch. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Good job, Mama. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I like to think of it karmically um, in terms of, so when I got into the business, 
I really wanted to be one of those brokers who never had to advertise and who was just like a word of mouth, like a referral broker. Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, how am I going to do that when I don't know anybody? (laughs) (laughs) Right. And then I was like, all right, let's get real. Let's like really break it down. And I was doing a lot of yoga at the time. And I'm like, all right, karma. Like, so right, <laughs> exactly, exactly. So what I did was, I was like, you know what? I want to be a referral broker, so I'm gonna give away referrals. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna like give it away, mm-hmm. just like the Red Hot Chili Pepper song. Like, <laughs> give it away, give it away, give it away now. <laughs> so that's what I what I started to do. I started like actively looking for referrals for other people, and then. Mm-hmm. And I did it. I did it for a long time, too. You know, it's like you have to do it, but you got to be really persistent about it Mm -hmm. because it's not like unless you've got crazy karma, I guess it's not just going to like happen after a week. And then after about a year, year and a half, all of a sudden I started to get really busy, like like random stuff, random people who I had met with a year before would call me and be like, oh, my God, you sold my sister's apartment. And now they can you help them sell like their townhouse? It's like, sure. Um, so I like to think of giving in that way. And then I started on my team, you know, I I started to get really busy. I needed to hire people and I started to teach my agents and give to them and to give them, you know, knowledge. Mm -hmm. And then that, you know, all of a sudden then they would get really busy. So in terms of business, that's kind of how I like to think about it. You know, like whatever you're purposefully giving out, whatever, think of it this way, whatever you want to get give it away first and like give it away until it hurts. That's how you know you're really doing it right. When you're like, I can't, this is just like, it's too much. It's too much. That's when you're like, yes, that's when the magic's going to happen. But I love, 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 love that you said about a year and a half. Yeah. Because I think most people quit at a month. Totally. Like, like, oh, but I gave. I'm right. Like, exactly. For how long? <laughs> you have to be like, this is, this, you got to be persistent. You know, this is, this is not a short game business. This is a long game. And it's Mm -hmm. so applicable to every business that's out there. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that, you know, our demographic is a lot of women that are aspiring to six figures and then Mm -hmm. others that would be more our contemporaries. And I think those ones that are aspiring, they look at women like all of you and they think, oh, it just happened like (laughs) a year and a half before you get a retirement. So to all of you, I would say go in for a year and a half, mm-hmm. full bore, <laughs> until it hurts. I'm exactly. Gonna, I'm going to start using that. I know. It, yeah. it, I know it just made sense. Yeah. It just That's made awesome. sense when I heard it. Hmm. That made me think about something really quick. Um, the time, like what you said, giving it whatever you want, give it away. Mm-hmm. And I thought about time because mm-hmm. I'm here a lot of people wanting more time right now and wanting more flexibility and realizing that you're to give time first. Mm-hmm. before you get it. And this was the key thing. As, you know, as you're giving, you want to keep in your mind like if I want if I want more time for myself, as you're giving away the time, you think to yourself, this is how I create having more of my own time mm-hmm. by sharing it with other people. So you're like you're programming your mind to receive whatever karma you're putting out there. And also then I feel like you do it with the right heart intent. Yeah, exactly. Too, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 That's really that's powerful. Awesome. Thanks. I love that. I mean, listening to you all, I am thinking, well, the first thing I would say, speaking to what you had said about women, the women potentially listening to this are, um, you know, there's that fear or there's that uncertainty, or I think a lot of times we put people on pedestals and we think that they are doing, they are, somehow the way they've been built, they're more likely to succeed in this way. Mm -hmm. And I think that people just should hear that that's not real. We're all messy and like Mm -hmm. we've all, uh, you know, it, it's not, and uh, we've jumped over a lot of hurdles to get through, get to where we are. And there was no map. Like, I don't think any of us went, oh, okay, here's exactly what I need to do to be, to make this happen. Um, it's just trying new things. Um, and, I, and there's a really great book called The Middle Finger Project, which I just read and it was wildly good. Like it, it really, it speaks to that of a lot of women doing that. And just know that if you see someone up here and you think, man, I wish I could do that. I don't know if I could ever do that. That seems so out of reach. It is 
absolutely not. Um, yeah, nobody here is better than anybody else. Um, but I, I think the biggest way that this has changed my life is, especially in business, but it feeds into personal too, is you get to be next to, listen to, breathe the air with people who are optimists and change makers and uh, visionaries. And those conversations are so life-changing, mm-hmm. life-giving. Um, I have been in rooms where that just wasn't the case. And like, this is just, I, mean, I guess I'm just a happier person. I'm more energized because I get to be with people like this who aren't talking about other people, aren't talking about mm-hmm. events. We are envisioning things. We're creating ideas and trying to build a better world. So it's a whole different world. And I'm grateful to be a part of it. Mm-hmm. I love that. The creators. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like it's such, uh, I, I'm like in the early stages, I feel like of the generosity thing and I am still, you know, working on my career. I switched over from teaching, which was a very different shift. Um, I feel like economically for me. So I'm now in a position where I can do more giving. Um, I don't know if you know how much teachers make, but it's (laughs) not a lot. Um, (laughs) But I was always giving with my time. Um, And so it's nice to now be able to do it. We, my team, we really do it on like a very grassroots level. I was born and raised in this small town that is outside of Sacramento. And so to me, yes, it's important to do the giving back to some of these bigger um, entities, you know, that are very established but also I'm super passionate about spreading the word. I think you guys had mentioned spreading the word for like that mom and pop shop. Like mm-hmm. to me, that's a generosity thing. How can I help these people? Because they're, they're my people. Like these are the people I grew up with. And so I think being able to bring them in um, when we do events, we will do like, we love throwing parties. Um, we love any excuse to throw a party. And we realize people actually don't want to go to the parties. They feel weird going to the parties that are just for them. Like they want to go to a party because they like to give and they don't know how. And that's like the big thing. And so every time we have thrown a party that is, okay, hey, we're, we're fundraising for this event. It's always like the, the turnout is huge. And so we love doing that. Like that's, that's where we build our business. And then, and then in turn, that's also in turn how we grow our business. Mm-hmm. It's because people know us because that's what we do. We, we're all over town. We're like very omnipresent um, unintentionally, I guess. But um, yeah. And how warming to see people that you've grown up with, yeah, right? and to be able to impact them. Oh yeah, it's yeah, yeah it, it's, it's so special many, on that level. There's so many levels of it, and mm-hmm. I think you hit on this. Like, there's the very local, there's the international. I know some of you are international and very invested internationally, but I think everybody, all of you, have this heart for giving that is amazing, which has pulled you all together. So let's talk about that because I think that. Teams are an interesting dynamic and you guys all work together, but you're not on the same team, so to speak. So will you talk about how that happens? How, how did this pull together? And there's going to be five more of you mm-hmm. that I'm interviewing in the next mm-hmm. podcast. How did that work out? Mm. That's a good question. That's a good, I don't know if I've pondered that one, but it seems almost like there's like a magnetic quality to people who have similar values. Mm-hmm. Um, you start to see, I mean, it, probably social media is how we started to get to know each other. And if you're posting things that sort of are in alignment in terms of values and how you want to grow your business, um, start reaching out, start having conversations and realizing, oh, there's more of us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm, ma- oh, I'm manifested that I needed, I wanted, um, I remember going to a conference and listening about generosity and I was like, how do I make that happen? Cause I knew, you know, I got into the business for that, but I still obviously work. I was in the beginning stages and I made a phone call. I was going into DC and I was like, I need to meet someone. Like I need to meet a, <laughs> like, a sh- like, you know, someone that's really awesome. And this lady answered my phone call and she took me up on a coffee date, which she actually paid for the bill. And I was, I was going to treat her. And it was right here. This lady, this lady. She took me up. <laughs> and I, once I was like, oh my gosh, you know, she was amazing. And I was like, I don't know if she'll ever talk to me again. Right. Like I was so worried, like she'll never want to be my friend. And, <laughs> but you know, as, as, um, 
silly it might sound, I know what my heart was like, you know, uh, desiring and manifesting of, of growing and surrounding yourself with really good people who are just really looking to make an impact in their communities and their families and, and uh, for some, you know, across the world. And I just got very fortunate. And so I always give Sheena all the credit that she has made my, I remember that one conversation that I took away with the keyword was abundance. And I just, I have that like, kind of like, you know, tattooed in, in my soul. And that has given me the opportunity to meet so many wonderful people. Um, so yeah, so I think that's part of, you know, why I'm here. But don't you think it's cool because you kind of led with this, like you, you end up in a room with people that are like-minded and you were just bold enough to reach out. There's a lot of people that are not bold enough Mm -hmm. to make that phone call. Right. And that's a, that's a huge, that's a huge compliment Mm -hmm. for you that you did it. Absolutely. I think, you know, manifesting is important, but putting the work into it, like yes. you can't manifest this, but if you're not willing to put the effort into it, you know, it, then I feel like it's kind of like a dream. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's so powerful. Melissa, I said, um, we think it was Melissa. We're giving you credit for it. I'll take it. Last, I'm not, I she's like, take I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> our last conference, she's like, what's up with Idaho? I've never been there. You know, and so <laughs> that's also kind of how this started. It's like no one's ever been here. Have any, any no. of you been to Idaho? I was here maybe 10 years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, so it's like first so time for- did fly out. <laughs> I came actually to visit a friend who was in the military and her husband was deployed. So we went to the military installation. So oh. way far from this cute yeah. area. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't, you, yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so it was just like a, a couple people expressed interest in coming for a visit and, and a lot of us were attracted to each other from the generosity piece. And I've always thought, you know, I'm the average of the five people I, I hang around. So I might as well just make my level up my group. Yeah. And if I choose the group, then I have complete control. <laughs> <laughs> the control so, that you are. <laughs> I love you in control. So, um, so I just like chose the women that expressed interest, but also that I felt like we're a good fit for each other mm-hmm. and that we could all bring different things to, um, add to it. And, um, I feel they, they all, all of them, but one said yes. And the one that said no is just had a, is pregnant and just had a baby. So she'll probably be with us next time. Yeah. So it was really amazing that everyone that was asked and speaking of asking, like, it's amazing when you just ask for it and you get it. Yeah. So true. So I'm going to ask you a couple more questions. So one, and you already led off with this is one of the questions that I always ask all of my guests is, is there a book or a podcast that has made a huge impact mm-hmm. on you that you would recommend or that you recommend on a regular basis? Because I find that our listeners really thrive around that, like grabbing something from you and learning from it. So is there one that you would recommend? Chini, you can recommend another one if you want to. Because you look good. Sure. <laughs> um, Victor Frankl's The Meaning of Life. Yes. Um, that is powerful. And it shows up in so many books. Once you start on down this road and you start, you know, if you're, if you like to read, um, Victor Frankl's name comes up all the time. He was a Holocaust survivor. He, he survived three different, um, uh, what is it? Prisons, Con- concentration, concentration camps. Yeah. yeah. So that's a really powerful book. I'm actually on Goodreads. Uh, all my books are not yet loaded. My daughter is loading them up, but there's a few hundred on there already. So, um, that I love like books and I rated them. I rate what? Yeah. So I don't love them all, but I rated yeah, them. So just a few hundred. <laughs> um, I quite like Patrick Lilly's Rev podcast. I have found that to be amazing in that it takes you know, you think you're really listening to stuff about a business and how do you, you know, this is how this person did it with their business and this is how they got successful doing it. It's not really about that though. It's really about something much, much bigger. Mm -hmm. And it's more about, you know, it's more about your mindset and about the people you're around with, you surround yourself with and their values and their beliefs. And that's like really that's like what, what will impact your business. Mm -hmm. Because in a sense, like, aren't we kind of all on the same team, even if we aren't Mm -hmm. really like we're all people, we all have feelings and we all have the same kinds of feelings. We all seek, you know, food, shelter, water, love. So like, we kind of all are on the same team in a sense, like all of the issues, they're all 
human issues. It's not just like, oh, well, Daniela has these specific issues only. <laughs> like, we all do, mm-hmm. really. I think that drives home the point of abundance that Daniela brought up that we're all trying to impact the human experience yeah. and improve it. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if someone's working on homelessness, someone's mm-hmm. working on trans rights, someone's working on, uh, you know, veterans, whatever it is, we, we've been supportive in how we can in these different issue areas because every one of them is about improving life of humans. I think it's about, too, making someone feel important. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's where that giving piece is. It doesn't have to be a big group. It could be a person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like just mm-hmm. making someone feel like they're the most important person in the world. And what that could, the ripple effect that could happen from just one, one-on-one yeah. giving to someone. So that my, one of my favorite books is um, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And it's like the oldest book that still is true. I think mm-hmm. it was written in like 46 And it's still true. And it is. It's that I think is one of the most important things if you're going to do good is to figure out a way to connect to people really genuinely. And that kind of he talks about that. Like, how do you influence? Because that, you know, you want to take people with you. You want to connect with other people. And so it's helping in whatever you're trying to do, but also gathering people on your on your boat to do it with you is really good. Um, And then I also really like. I'm sure you know her because she's, I think, in your area, Carrie Mm Scholl. Yeah, she has her podcast. I what I like about it, um, I don't remember the name of it. Hyper local, hyper fast, hyper local, hyper fast, and that's very much what I, you know, my my thing is. And Mm -hmm. her her quote is to be the mayor of your town, Mm -hmm. and I think like creating an experience for people who live in your town to really love where they live, as cheesy as that sounds, but that all has to do with generosity and how do you like bring everybody up together kind of thing. Yeah. Acknowledging people's dignity and Mm -hmm. proliferating hope. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's what all of you are doing in all your different ways. Mm -hmm. Uh, My favorite podcast that I love to listen to, and it was a game changer for me is uh, uh, Win, Make, Give by, I'm a fan girl of Ben Kenny and his, um, his, you know, his, uh, what he has to say, but it just really, uh, what really sunk in is, you know, that I, it, it changed my mind was, um, the ability to do what you want, when you want, with whom you want. Mm -hmm. And that was so deep. Like, like, okay, how do I get to that level of being able to do what I want, when I want, whom I want? Like, you know, if you want to, give like $2,000 to a nonprofit and you don't have to, you know, question it and you just do it because you have that ability to do. So that was a really good um, podcast because it just has made me not only apply, how can I, you know, get more structure that you can give back at a higher level. And then also the book is a millionaire messenger. Mm -hmm. A really good book, you know, just how about really ha- being able to be uh, really intentional about giving your message and how, you know, uh, you can captivate a bigger audience. Awesome. I'm, I'm reading Gap versus Gain and um, and kind of setting it down, picking it up. But every time I read something, it's um, very impactful about thinking about that we start here and we want to get here and we get to here and we feel like or even we get to here, but then we raise the bar. Right. And so we're always feeling like we're not there. Mm-hmm. And it creates us to not be present, to not be happy, mm-hmm. to not, you can't be abundant like yeah. that. Mm-hmm. And it's it, it's a pretty simple um, book, yet really impactful because I can label myself if I'm in gap or gain. Yeah. And, I, my, and my team's going to read it too, so they'll be able to label themselves too, so that we can actually be present, be abundant, and make impact yeah, when Dr. we're... Dr. Benjamin Hardy. I, yes. I really love him as well. Yeah. It's such a good, it's yeah, so good. I'm going to reread the book. I love it yeah. so much. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you guys for doing this. I'm going to ask you one closing question and then for time. I wish I could take each one of you and interview you today. <laughs> um, so I would love to have you share with me one of the organizations and it doesn't have to be the one that you've given the most to. It doesn't just the one that has been for you the most... I guess, abundant in your heart that you were able to help. Mm -hmm. Um, Just, I think it would be fun to share that with our audience. We're going to tag all of you. So it'll allow them to learn a little bit more about you as well. So I'm going to start. Sure. There is a fabulous organization out of my hometown in Elk Grove called Chicks in Crisis. Um, I just recently got to be a board member. I'm so excited to be able to be a part of it, but they support women Um, in need, whatever situation they're in. Um, Typically, they're young moms uh, who can't afford 
all of the necessities. So they do everything from like hygiene drives to diapers to clothes. And they are one of, if you've been around, you guys have been around a lot of, of um, nonprofit programs that sometimes can be a mess unintentionally. Um, it's just, they're trying to do what they can. And it it is one of those ones that it blows you away how organized it's all on Salesforce. Every woman who comes here gets loaded down with items. I mean, like a whole month's worth of clothes, a whole month's worth of diaper, you know, everything is so amazing. And they come and they ask to show proof of um, school and or a job. Um, and they, with that in turn, they set them up for classes of how to do resumes and ha- all of the things. And it is so incredible how many people that they have touched. Um, I'm just super I love the organizations it. that are a hand up, not a hand out. No, exactly. Yeah. And that's, and that is literally what they say. This yeah. is a hand up. We are, we are helping you, you know, do something um, with all of this. So it, yeah, it's incredible to see it. So cool. It's awesome. We, um, we paired with an organization years ago, and this is what really got me into more strategically giving. And what I mean by that is just leveraging our network for good and just being able to really, I guess I, my word of the day is proliferate, like proliferate what we were doing. Um, and I don't want to name the organization because we have had to split from them, but it's still their mission. I think it was so powerful. Um, we helped build a shower truck for the homeless in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. And, um, it started out with an idea of, um, trying to do more for the people living on the streets. Cause it was, at that time it was very hard to find a safe, clean place to get a shower. Mm -hmm. Um, women were cleaning themselves even during their cycle in, um, uh, gas station bathrooms. So really sad situation. Um, so we built the shower truck, people started showing up and we realized that they were putting on the same clothes that they had been wearing for the previous four weeks. So imagine like going and taking a shower and putting on the same underwear you've been wearing for four weeks. Um, and so that gave us the idea, um, you know, once you start getting into this work, the work has no end, uh, which is a great <laughs> opportunity, right? And that allows more people to come into it. So we started to do drives for brand new underwear, um, clothing, toiletry items. Sometimes we had food. And so when people would come, we could really fully recognize them as a full human being by, you know, they would go into the shower and come out in new clothing. And it's, it really was transformative. Um, and I'll tell a quick story. Um, at one point we had a gentleman, we call them, uh, our guests came and um, I heard, I heard a lot of screaming and he was yelling at one of the volunteers. He was upset about something. And I said, Hey guys, you know, um, we came here today to serve you. Uh, it just like, you know, just recognize that and um, let's all get get along. And he said, if you weren't here, somebody else would effing be here. <laughs> and I looked up at the shower truck and saw my logo, knowing that I'd been one of the biggest investors. And then I was volunteering and bringing so many people and items and just thought well, maybe I would correct him. And then I thought that he probably slept on the concrete last night and he was probably pretty cold last night. And he probably almost got ran over because that happens a lot to homeless people who live on the streets and he probably hasn't eaten in a while. And I had done all those things. Um, and so I just said to him, you know, why don't you let me take you over to the shower? And he came out just a different person. And I came out of that a different person. Mm-hmm. So it was really powerful for me. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, grew up right outside of Boston. And when I was in high school, I heard about a place called Rosie's Place, which is a, um, it's place. I don't want to, it's not a shelter. It is, it, it's a, it's a place for women and children who are um, experiencing domestic violence. And I had never, you know, I didn't know that was a thing. And when I heard about that, I just, something inside me just, I don't know, it just broke. I was like, oh my God, that's just, that's awful. And then as I got older and understood what that was more, um, it's always been something that has been, and as a woman, very near and dear to my heart. Um, And that is a place that I support as much as I can. Um, That's something that is, it is just very important to me is, supporting women who are victims of domestic violence um, and cyclical abuse. 
So I have partnered up with a nonprofit called uh, Family Promise of Lake Houston that serves um, the Houston area families who are exper experiencing homelessness. And what I love about it is that they, again, it's a hand up and they teach them life skills and they get them up and going where their goal is to get them on, you know, on a new uh, apartment, a rental, uh, because, you know, they're trying to get them jobs and whether like we just uh, recently helped a, a family um, he got a uh, welding cert um, certification so he can start, you know, obviously providing. But I think it also has taught me that you can't just, you know, easily um, judge people that are going through tough times mm -hmm. because it's easy to say, well, why don't they have a job? Why aren't they working? And if you dig deep enough, you will realize sometimes people are just hurting and they want going through some tough times. You know, their kids fall uh, they're Ill sick and they're going from, you know, hospitals and surgeries. And before you know it, you know, not every job will be extremely uh, compassionate or patient and they lose their jobs and now they're out of money and now they're, you know, live, living in their cars. And so just being able to just be, um, compassionate and be able to be affiliated with them has, you know, helped me tremendously of to see um, people and dig, dig deeper and not just assume that, you know, um, that they're there because they were not wanting to, you know, put the effort in, and yeah. do better mm -hmm. for them or their families and also serve on the board. So it's just a really good uh, nonprofit that helps families out of homelessness. Mm -hmm. Um, when and back in the day when I had more time, less money, I um, decided I wanted to run a marathon. And because, you know, that's when you're 20, <laughs> so you're 20 something. <laughs> that's what you do. I don't run marathons anymore. Um, and so I found this group called Team in Training. And it's one of the largest running groups in the world, I think. They fundraise for the Leukemia Lymphoma Society. So I didn't know anything about the fundraising part. I just wanted to run a marathon and I like having a team. So I joined the team and they said, um, you're to find someone to run for. Like you're gonna be more likely to finish the marathon mm -hmm. if you have someone that is going through, you know, cancer. And so I, th I thought of two people I knew, the only two people I knew that had cancer. And um, one was Hillary Horton Brown. She's pretty local um, celebrity. She'd be a great person for your podcast, actually. Incredible, most inspiring person I've ever met. Hillary was the, um, nutritionist and dietitian for the Boise State athletes. So she was mine in college when I was on the volleyball team. I didn't have an eating disorder, so I didn't see her very much, but she did see quite a few, unfortunately, or fortunately, she helped a lot of kids bulk up, get, get leaner, but a whole, and mostly get healthy so that they can perform in sports through, through, their, through what they ate. And so I sat in her little office and she, for the first time, told me about cancer. And I had never... I mean, she was like so positive that I never even knew that she was going through the crap, like 10 years of blood cancer, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. In like eight rounds of chemo, she was, she's now today too, she's done so much chemo that there's no more chemo for her. For her. And um, so she's done like all the trials even, and she's survived. I mean, her mind has got her to survive for even, I mean, incredible. And, um, and um, we also, um, she, she, I think it was Hillary that said Lisa Parker, it, who was the athletic director at Boise State, also had cancer. Um, and Lisa's now passed away. And I, I got to get to know her in an amazing way just from being forced to find these mentors through this running program. And the thing is, when, when you find someone to do it for, you can't, not, you can't quit. Right. So I ended up fundraising over $100,000 for, um, for the Leukemia Lymphoma Society, created a party that's called, I, I named it and created it. It's called Share the Fight. I no longer do it because I've lost all my time. And I've decided to spend some time with my family and, and work. Um, but that, that platform... And Hillary and Lisa were the reason why um, that I was able to um, fundraise so much. And what I learned from that was that um, when you ask people, they say yes. Mm -hmm. And so now in sales, because I was selling like a little bit of real estate at the time. Now I just ask for everything I want and I get it almost all the time in an authentic way. But I, I was scared to ask in my 20s. Mm -hmm. But I even had like famous people come to the party, like Heather Cox from ESPN came and she was our MC. And it, you just it's amazing when you just ask and, and they say yes. And we're going to end on that. Okay. That was pretty awesome. <laughs>
<laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you all. Thank, thank you, you so much. You. It was such a blessing to have you all here. And I'm really excited to hear everything that goes on on this stage behind us for the rest of the day. So thank you for being with me. Thank, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you.